Hey folks, Fernando doing another video for the Monarch Survivalist. Stick around for this video. I'll be covering certain things that are very important given everything that's happening right now in terms of violence on the streets, civil unrest. This has been maybe one of the main things regarding my entire philosophy on preparedness, very much going back to the days of the uh, economic collapse in Argentina in 2001, my first survival book, which by the way, many of you guys have. And if you have it and you like it and you haven't left a review on Amazon, do, do me a favor. I really appreciate those surviving the economic collapse. My latest one, Street Survival Skills. This is what I've been doing all along. This is my take on, on survival based on a more practical approach to it, not so much um, wishful thinking, living off the land in the mountains and that sort of thing. There's different currents in, in survival. Some of them are more um, homesteady type, living off the land or you know, making your own food. Survivalism is so broad and covers so many aspects of, of our lives, pretty much all of them. And we, we kind of focus on things we either experience or things we, we feel attracted to because we like it. We like that sort of lifestyle. So for a lot of folks, it's this kind of thing, you know, the, the farm, the homestead, that's all, all fantastic. Now, based on, on my own experience, mine has been this. Mine has been, you know, shit happening and you having to deal with it. And a lot of it is... Um, you know, self-defense, protecting yourself, protecting your family. One of the criticisms I have from my from my first book is someone in, in Amazon in a review gave me a one-star review saying, he's not talking about the economy, he's talking about killing people and, and guns and that sort of thing. Well, because I know for a fact that when this happens, this is what you end up needing the most. And sure, there's a very important economic aspect to all of this, and I do cover it in my channel, in my books and such, but you know what, getting more money, finding a better job, moving somewhere else where there's better employment opportunities, all of that is, is stuff you can deal with. Is someone getting shot, someone, a loved one getting hurt, that is kind of a game changer for you. That's the kind of thing that ruins your life. That's the kind of thing I've seen firsthand happen to a lot of people and basically to my entire country. This is why I focus a lot on this sort of stuff. And sure, there's a lot of aspects, you know, storing food, um, you know, learning how to cook, staying healthy and, and all of that. that. That is all very important, very significant. But there's also this. And in this video specifically, I'll be talking about this stuff about um, streets becoming a lot more dangerous than you were used to, the violence, the rioting, the people attacking you for no good reason, maybe because you're the wrong skin color, apparently, you know, that's something <laughs> that has become politically accepted these days, you know, and many of you guys are fantastic people but are naive and that's great because you're naive because you've never had to deal with some of the worst crap people are capable of. I don't mean this in any derogative term or anything. People that have lived their entire lives in developed countries where things basically work, they're not used to the chaz. I live my entire, most of my life in a big chaz where anyone does whatever as they want and those same animals end up running your country and your country is basically run by criminals. People in Venezuela know exactly what I'm talking about. A lot of folks watching this from my Spanish channel, which by the way, I have a Spanish channel. It's called Supervivencia Moderna. I'll leave the link. But you guys in Latin America know exactly what I'm talking about. Many of you folks in the United States, Canada, Europe, these are things you're just not used to. And you see this on the clips right now. People surprised when someone just hits them over the head or just punches them in the face. This 90-year-old little lady walking down the street and this animal just slugging her in the face just because. Maybe just because she was white or just because she was a frail old woman. Whatever the, the reason is, good people are not used to this sort of thing. Good people that haven't experienced this as as a way of life are not used to this and are surprised by it and they don't see it coming. Why is this person attacking me? Why is this guy punching me? I did nothing to him. I'm not even a racist. Why is this guy shouting in my face at Black Lives Matter and punching me if I, I'm not a racist? This is the stuff that you guys don't understand. It doesn't matter if you're not. It doesn't matter if you judge people not by their skin color but by their uh, you know moral values and their actions basically. It just doesn't matter because that doesn't matter to those coming after you. If someone is attacking you for 
this sort of thing, then you still have to find a way to defend yourself. It doesn't matter that you're not what they're accusing you of being, right? Um, one more thing bef before going on. Um, I'm doing in, in, in this Saturday, 3 p.m. Eastern, I'm doing another live stream with Matt Bracken. Matt Bracken is, is a great friend, first of all, that's what I value the most about, about him. He's also a, a former Navy SEAL. He has a ton of military experience, very clever guy, very smart guy, excellent author. He has written what is, in my opinion, one of the best uh, survival-themed um, fiction uh, novels that is available out there, the, the, the Enemies a Trilogy, very relevant to what's happening right now he describes in his uh, in his books a world in which basically Antifa rules the United States and everything goes to hell pretty much what's happening right now to some extent so that's a book you definitely want to get and also getting into this topic my book street survival skills this is the kind of stuff I go through in a lot of detail it is kind, kind of like half the book is about self-defense techniques things I've learned in classes things I've learned along you know life how to handle lots of these situations, taking cover, using different sorts of weapons, but also how to handle this thing of being in the street and dealing with you know, people that, that are likely to be a threat to you, how to identify them, suspicious behavior, how you handle in terms of being indoors in places where you may end up being uh, attacked or, or cornered by, you know, anything. Could be terrorists, could be rioters. This is, you know, this is some of the stuff that many of you guys probably already kind of uh, incorporated or, or use already, um, such as, you know, where you're going to be sitting with, with your back against, uh, with your back against the wall look uh, towards the main entry and finding you know secondary exits in case something goes wrong how you sit with a friend with a partner covering each other's back this is the stuff that of all of the stuff you see here this is the more valuable the more useful thing that I can provide for you available in Amazon with a link below as always but I I'm I'm serious about this doesn't matter what gun you have doesn't matter what knife you have this is what's gonna be getting you out of maybe and when, when I say this, I mean reading it, but also putting it into practice. Really doesn't do a whole lot of good if you just read a book that gives you information that is, you know, based on, on first-hand experience, and I believe it's quite valuable, but if you don't put it into practice as of right now, if you don't incorporate this sort of thing into your way of life, then little good will come out of it. But having said all that, explaining that what I believe is the key, more important aspect of this, let's talk now, yes, finally, about some of the tools you may want to have uh, um, so as to be better prepared out there on the streets. For you guys watching this in the United States, you have the great advantage of having somewhat of an easy um, access to a concealed carry weapon. You, you get your permit, you know, sure, there are some states where it's not much of a possibility, but wherever and whenever possible, I'm a big believer in having a firearm with you. Now, I'll say a couple things that may come in handy, even if you are concealed carrying already. One of the trends we've seen lately is that a lot of folks are starting to understand that maybe something like um, uh, the typical concealed carry gun that most folks in the United States would go for would be something more compact, single stack magazine, something comfortable and just you know enough for what your needs may be. Most people assume that three or four rounds is gonna be enough. Usually it is, I have no, no problem with that. But what I've noticed lately is a lot of folks are talking about, yes, I'm leaving behind my subcompact little 32 and I'm starting to carry a serious gun. By serious gun, I mean a, a full-size pistol. That is something you, might, you may wanna take into account. This is a HK P7 or Heckler and Koch <laughs> P7M8. It's just uh, something to, to illustrate my point. Maybe you don't want to have um, a single stack. Maybe you want to go towards a uh, double stack. And this is an HK P7M13, double stack gun, more capacity. Maybe something interesting for you. Sure, this is more of a, specifically in the United States, this is more of a collector piece because of the price that these things uh, have and such. Now, it's not only about capacity. One of the things I love about P7 guns and the reason why I have two is that they are probably the most accurate combat firearm ever made. It is just uh, a laser beam, the way in which these things uh, shoot, in spite of their very compact um, frame and slide. The slide is very minimalistic. The accuracy you get out of this is part none. It is 
great. And this may be something key, essential, if a crowd of people is coming after you out of those out of that crowd maybe one or two actually have weapons or are the more active more violent people who you have to effectively defend against so in those cases having great accuracy is key because you have one threat you have one guy with a knife with a stick with a gun whatever it is you have one guy that you may need to engage with but you're surrounded by a lot of people that if, if you end up hitting any of those your life is over because those will be I was just explaining my pro protesting and blah 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 and you end up putting around on someone you shouldn't have that's a big deal at the same time you have to address the problem of that lunatic trying to kill you all right accuracy is essential this is yet another reason why I've never believed in some of these little ultra compact guns that's just my take on it don't want to make this video super long but I just want to be thorough in terms of the things I consider to be important another great tool you know, pepper spray. Saber Red is a, a staple all over the world. It's maybe one of the more efficient ones. Um, and as I was saying, I leave links for all of this stuff uh, below. This, you can buy it on Amazon. It's like 15, 20 bucks. Now, my advice is get one of the bigger canisters, not the smaller one. If there's a crowd, you want to spray all those folks that are coming after you. It is non-lethal and it may dissuade people from continuing with their violent behavior. Now, I could talk all day about this, but there's a, a psychological aspect to the crowd, to these cowards that feel empowered in their number. Surrounding you 360 degrees, it's very difficult to defend against. A firearm is something that's gonna be giving you a huge um, advantage, but uh, this is, while not bad, it's not gonna be nearly as good, and you may end up using it and spraying a bunch of people. Someone may be kicking you on, on your own uh, from behind and if you land on the floor they may all attack you at once and even if you have spray it just may not be enough yet it is a very valuable tool to have I go back to that avoiding a lot of this in the first place knowing how to handle these things knowing how to prevent these it is by far the most important lesson I could provide you uh, then in terms of, of knives a, a knife is a is a fantastic defensive tool as well usually it's not you mentioned nearly as much because people go directly to a gun but if you don't have access to that because of legal restrictions where you live and such these can be very useful tools for defense especially if there's a big crowd and you know at least some basic techniques folks I share a lot of that in my book but the best thing you can do is actually get a class get a class in which someone is sure try to get a good instructor because there's lots of you know nonsense out there but someone that is a responsible level-headed instructor and practicing key practicing with non-cooperative uh, opponents with with sticks or rubber knives will give you a much better idea very simple techniques about keeping the knife close to your body using maybe a reverse grip if this is something that gives you better retention and you're going to be controlling better closer to your space those are all things that may be valuable. A uh, little tip regarding knives. Notice how this one is kind of like a mean looking little blade. This actually saved my, my neck once in a certain situation where you know I came across like a couple of guys that obviously had no good intention. Uh, basically it ended up being that, just bringing out the knife, getting ready for whatever was coming and then noticing that yes, this was not gonna be going as they thought it would and changing their mind. Usually you see lots of blades that have these blackout spec ops, you know, secret secret assassin mission whatever bullshit that is all great especially if you're in the military you don't want to have anything shiny that's this kind of a big no-no in the military now in the civilian aspect there is something to be said about a blade that shines like this one many times in knife fights especially if it's a blacked out knife there may be a, um, a confrontation where you're defending against three or four guys and they don't even realize you're stabbing them until they actually see blood flowing or, or something serious gets cut but knives are not easily detectable especially in, in a big crowd something that's more flashy may be a little bit more intimidating and may make that person think they're actions a little bit better this is like the the famous uh, shotgun thing where you know pumping around in the chamber scares everyone uh, how much truth is there to that there may be I actually know of some cases where it actually kind of worked apparently they just changed their you know uh, 
behavior because of that or they felt maybe a little bit more intimidating. There's a pile of other incidents in which it achieved nothing at all because it's just a sound and not everyone runs scared over it. Um, with a blade it's something similar. Someone may look at this knife and say yeah I don't want to get stabbed by that thing or someone may just come at you nonetheless. You have to be ready to take action when you um, plan to do so. One of the things uh, I'll say is that this knife came very handy for me. Um, I ended up changing it for that one over there. So I went with uh, that knife, I went from that one to this one. Why? Be because I feel that bigger is better. I want to have a bigger knife. That's basically what it comes down to. And for many years in my life, this knife served me well. Actually, it was uh, another similar to that one. It's a previous generation, but basically the same thing. The wavy... Um, a counter curve that the, these things have just slashes very well if it ends up coming down to that. Um, I cannot think of much better knives just to keep a crowd away from you than slashing with this thing. It also has a very narrow piercing tip which um, makes it a fantastic uh, defensive use blade. Right. Then there's something else. Many of these things happen while you're in a car, while you're driving. Right. I have my car keys right there, so as to remind me of this. Don't get out of your vehicle. If you're driving and you see some of these uh, rioters or in, in protesters or whatever it is, um, just continue driving and don't stop. Avoid them as much as you can, of course, but if you're surrounded, if you're caught, just don't stop your vehicle. A couple things may happen, um, and I've seen all of these happen, all right? A lot of people just panic. A lot of people just panic, hit the gas, and just mow through everyone freaking out, all right? That happens. I've seen little ladies do that without having any ill intent, but they just freak out because they're scared, and understandably so. That's something you want to have control of. You don't want to lose your, your mind. Second, there's people that get very pissed. There's people that are just upset. You're working, you're busting your ass, and these bastards are screwing up with your life, and you just had enough of it, and you lose your temper, and you end up doing the exact same thing. You hit the gas, and you just drive through a crowd. That is likely to land you in jail for the rest of your life. You don't want to do that either. You don't want to get out of the car to explain your intentions. This is something happens as well. People get out of the car. Hey, what, what are you doing here? I'm with you guys. I believe in Black Lives Matter, and it, but I just have to get my kid to the hospital because he's dying there in the back seat. Or no, I just have to get to work because if not, I lose everything. So getting out of your vehicle and explaining will achieve nothing. You're only putting yourself at greater risk. Don't get out of your car to explain anything. If someone starts hitting your car, this actually happened to me in a crowd like that. People start pushing and, and kicking and doing this and you may get angry. You may get so pissed that you want to get out of your vehicle and kill them all with your bare hands. That is something very much of human nature. You bust your ass working. You you bought yourself a car and these assholes are kicking it, breaking it because they just feel they can, because law doesn't apply to them and you've had enough, you're, you're, you've done, you cannot take it anymore and you lose your temper. You don't, you, you cannot do that. You cannot lose your temper like that. So you just control yourself as much as you can and the only course of action is this one. You just avoid all eye, eye contact with anyone, even if they're smashing your windows or doors or everything, you avoid any kind of eye contact and you keep on driving, slowly. All right. This achieves a couple of things. First of all, you want to keep moving so as to not get completely surrounded and your windows start getting broken and smashed and someone gets into your vehicle, pulls you out, beats you to death. You keep on, on driving slowly but steadily. You don't stop your car. All right. And you don't uh, insult anyone. You don't do any eye contact so as to make things even worse. You keep on driving and what you do is when you keep on moving slowly, your car is a lot stronger than the people around it. It will push people out of the way. Even if someone falls down, you're doing your best you can so as to get yourself safe out of that situation while preserving people around you as much as possible. Also keep in mind this, cameras are everywhere. Your actions will be filmed and they will end up on YouTube and all over the news. If someone sees you driving slowly and trying to get out of that mess, you're know, doing as best as you can so as to not hurt anyone yet protect your life, your loved ones, 
then that is, is kind of undeniable that you're doing the best you can in, in spite of all these people attacking you. It looks better, it looks good. It looks a lot better than just driving with your truck and laughing your ass off as you, you, you stump over Antifa. It just will look like crap and it's likely to land you in jail. This, what I'm explaining, you continue driving slowly, getting yourself out of that situation, is the only reasonable thing to do. All right, having said all that, let's go on. Little gadget that I, I find that may be a pretty good idea, especially when it comes to some of these situations may be changing and very different. There's nothing written on stone here. So it may be a huge crowd or it may be you just took a wrong turn and you came across a couple of guys that are looting a place and they just see you and they say, oh, hey, look, look what we have here. Let's go kick his ass. And they come after you or maybe you're, uh, uh, women and they say okay let's go rape this woman or whatever it is many times these cowards count on the um, on the advantage of being anonymous of being in a place that no one is noticing no one is seeing them and they just go for it um, lots of things go down if you are being attacked like this dark alley or dark street or all of a sudden you find yourself in a place that you didn't expect to be isolated because it usually isn't, but this was going down, there's civil unrest there, and you suddenly find yourself in a bad spot and there's people coming after you, a small personal alarm may may save your neck. Um, we all, you know, some people make, make fun of the rape whistle. The idea behind the rape whistle is that um, you attract attention to you, yourself when you're being attacked, and you use a whistle because it's more effective than screaming. When, when you're being attacked like that, um, and shocked and you don't know what's going on you may be you may freeze and you may lose control even of the ability to scream out and ask for help this only requires you to pull this little string right here and it's going to be a pretty loud alarm it is not any kind of guarantee by any means but it may be the thing that dissuades people and they all of a sudden see that hey we are you know there's something bringing attention to us someone from a building may start filming what we're doing here someone that was not paying attention it may now be paying attention and filming from uh, some window above us or whatever we don't want attention we want to abuse this person but you know, get away with it. This may be just enough to get you out of that. And yes, it has a, a little light. I don't. I'm not much of a believer in you know the, the the tactical light effect of you know blinding people. I haven't seen that work very well in general. Maybe the case. It's not something I would trust a lot of. I like the idea of the personal alarm. All right. Yes, of course, I have body armor here. It may make sense depending on if you are finding yourself in a more delicate spot, if you have to be in a place that's a little bit more dangerous for whatever reason, body armor makes sense. It's something I've been very uh, vocal about for years, but now even more so. If you find yourself that you have to be in spots that are a little bit more dangerous, it may be something that you want to consider. Uh, gas mask. <laughs> well, why is it here? Sure, coronavirus, a lot of people think that masks are a political statement. If you're wearing a mask you're a democrat if you're not you're a republican i don't fall for that i think that uh, a mask in some situations is exactly what you want to have if i'm in a crowded place where there's there may be people infected i'm not going to be going with those crappy you know mouth pieces that some of the you know hollywood celebrities are using i go with a full-on mask that actually provides the protection i want now one of the things i notice is that these things not only protect you from coronavirus, they may protect you from tear gas, you know, smoke, anything going on out there in the street. This is going to be protecting you from this. Tear gas will not get through this thing. This is not one of those cheap, crappy uh, coronavirus, you know, making a statement mask. This is an actual gas mask. It filters everything that goes in here. And before you ask, I got this on eBay. Yes, this is a GSR general service respirator from Scott. Not easy to get. And the only place I think you can get these right now, eBay. So yeah, and it's really not the best time to go buying this. I'll leave any link that I have for a mask similar to this one below, if there's something available on Amazon, but this one will not be it. One other thing is it provides protection to your face in general. Anyone punching you, you know, this is gonna be protecting your mouth, your jaw, your eyes. It's gonna be protecting you from any impact because you have a lot of, you know, uh, uh, rubber material 
providing cushioning from any blows you may be receiving to your face. There's also a psychological effect of, yeah, you kind of not look like the kind of person they would want to engage with when you're wearing this. Um, it's a little bit like those, like the psychology involved in, in sunglasses, where you don't really see the eyes of the person, you don't see if he's looking in one direction or the other. That puts you in a position of, you know, less power from the one that actually sees your face, he sees where you're looking at, while you cannot do the same thing and this covering your mouth as well it's a little bit of a um of a don't mess with me kind of uh, message that is putting out there, right? And finally, your footwear. Why? Because the best thing you can do going back to that is avoid all of this. If you see this, if you see rioting, if you see problems, if you see civil unrest, don't get involved. Don't go on there and tell them. But many times, you know, if someone comes at you, the best way you, the best thing you can do is turn the other way and get yourself out of there. So having good uh, footwear as a daily EDC type of clothing that you have is always a good idea. Folks, I hope you enjoyed this little video. Remember, links for a lot of this stuff, including my books, will be available below. Remember, this Saturday, 3 p.m. Eastern with Matt Bracken, we're going to be talking about... Um, uh, home defense and uh, community defense, how to organize that in these times of civil unrest. Hope you see us there. Join us and leave your comments, questions and such. We're going to be answering some of those live. See you in the next video, folks. Have an awesome day.